Hey guys, CB Super here. Uh, today I'm going to go over two things actually. Uh, one is a whip pan transition and also how to do a whip pan transition if you actually didn't do a whip pan. Uh, so obviously the best way to do this would be to do this when you're shooting your footage. Um, and to do that, all you have to do is whip the pan. Um, as you can see, I have some footage here where uh, it was the actual pan was conducted prior to bringing it into post. Um, and so what this is, is this is two separate pieces of footage. Uh, each of them have the same uh, movement, right? So it's a left to right movement. Um, this this footage actually isn't moving as much, but it has uh, that big, large vehicle that is crossing from left to right. So it's just the the movement. You need some form of movement that moves you into that transition. And then to actually do the transition is really easy when you've created this nice movement that moves into another movement, and then all of a sudden it comes to a stop. Uh, and you could probably even get away with just leaving it like this. But if you just come over to in between the clips and you right click, it's going to give you the option to add a cross dissolve. And you can do a 6, 12 or 24 frame cross dissolve. You can even do all the way up to 48. You can actually even enlarge this if you want even further cross dissolve. And depending on the difference in those two clips, uh, sometimes you can get away with a 12 frame cross dissolve or even a six frame cross dissolve But for this I probably go with like a tw like a 48 frame cross dissolve and That's pretty seamless right there And it's changing it's it's drastically changing colors and changing tonality um, But I think it works pretty well. So that's that's the easy way to do it um, Unfortunately a lot of times you'll get footage that hasn't been whip panned so you kind of have to do that in post and that's what we're going to go over here. So I have this picture of Korea and then I have this other picture of Saigon. Uh, both of them are just time lapses, but I want to have an easy transition and we're, say we're going to do a whip pan transition in from one to the other. This is kind of what the final is going to look like. And so you just create that actual whipping emotion by moving the footage. I'm actually going to start a new project just so I can show you how to do this. All right, so I'm going to just bring in some footage real quick. We're just going to bring the same clips in. All right, and just bring your plate. Oh, I don't really need that. I'm going to unlink it, delete that. Um, so make sure snapping's on because you're going to actually use snapping for this. Uh, what I usually do is I bring my uh, my playhead to the center of those two clips and I use a left or right arrow to just move inward into the clip so that I have enough clip to actually uh, do the transition. So you can do this anywhere from like five or six frames all the way up to like 10 frames. Uh, I'm probably going to do around eight frames or so. So I'm just going to click on the left arrow key eight times. One, two. So I just moved into the frame eight frames. And I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to go to the blade tool and I'm just going to make a, a cut there. And then I'm going to go back to the selection tool, pressing A, and I'm just going to move this up and over so it can snap to that playhead. Now I can go to the blade tool again. It's going to automatically snap to the end of the other clip. Go back to the selection tool, bring it back down. Now I can take these two clips that are no longer connected to their parent clips and I can right click and I can create a new fusion clip. Let's say, what that, all that's gonna do is it's gonna combine those two clips and now I can jump over, as long as my playhead is touching these clips, um, I can jump over to fusion and we can go ahead and start mapping out our transformation. So we're just gonna rename these real quick, F2. I'm just gonna F2 rename Vietnam. This one will be Korea. We're, so we're going from Vietnam to Korea. So we're going to want Korea to be the background and Vietnam will be the foreground. 
Um, so first thing we're gonna need is we're actually gonna need um, some transformation nodes. So I can just click on each one of these and add in some transform nodes. Uh, we can push this merge out just a little ways. And let's go ahead and switch these up. So this will be the background and this will be the foreground. Let's go ahead to zero and we're gonna go to Vietnam, which is gonna be moving first. Come over and add a keyframe over on center transform. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to about seven, about seven frames. And we're just gonna type in negative negative 0.5 and then click off. Now that's gonna move it over to the left and we can come over, since, this, since we're already where we want to end up at, uh, we can come over to transform two, which is gonna be the Korea transform and we can just click on this. Um, that's gonna, cause we want the, the end frame to be right where it's at. So we're actually gonna go back to uh, frame zero transform for Korea and then we're gonna we're gonna type in uh, 1.5 because we want it to go one full width to the right all right and that should push it off now let's see what we got going on here um, let's move it back a little bit okay so that's essentially what we want um, we can add some motion blur just to kind of hide that because I mean if you come over here and anywhere in I mean, that's that's kind of hard to miss, right? Uh, so let's go back over to Fusion. Um, the easiest way to do this is actually just to come over to each one of the transform nodes, click on the motion blur. Um, you can turn the quality all the way up. You can turn the shutter angle up. One thing you'll notice is that the, the edge of it is being kind of eaten away or eroded away from that using the actual blur. Got to push that center bias. We can push it over. And then we'll come over to the transform two. We go to settings, motion blur. We can turn these qualities up. Um, and then for this, we just push it inward a little bit. And all that's going to do is, is it's kind of faking this nice blurred edge now. Um, so then if we come back over to the edit tab and we let it cache, we'll see that uh, it's going to be blended a lot better. So that's pretty good. You know, it's it's not my favorite, right? I would much rather have this done in production, you know, plan it out. So when you're shooting your clips, just, um, you know, especially if it's something that is not narrative, uh, it's a lot easier if at the end of every clip, you just pan, pan away, uh, you know, or get a couple pans in in the beginning. One thing you can always do is you can reverse the clip uh, if you don't like the direction it's going. And as long as you don't have anything in your frame that's moving forward like a car, because um, that would be pretty obvious if the car was driving in reverse all of a sudden. Okay, so just say you don't like that method. Um, you can always come back over here and you can click off of the motion blur. Uh, one thing you can do is right where these they all merge at this merge node here. You can, after the merge node, you could actually uh, do a, you could actually put in a blur. I'd probably go with a, a directional blur. Go ahead and add that. Uh, the only thing is that you will have to, you're gonna have to animate this on. And the easiest way to do that would probably just come to wherever, whatever frame you think the center is. Maybe, maybe right about there. And just use that as like your, this is gonna be when the most direction blur uh, is needed. So you can just kind of turn up the length. Um, and you don't have to go with 0.1. You can actually type in like a higher value if you wanna go 0.5. I mean, that's gonna get pretty drastic. Uh, and you can even tone that down. Um, and then just, just know that you're gonna have to keyframe this so maybe I go to the end here. And then you can just type back in zero and then go to the first frame. Type in zero. And then you can come back over, let it cache. All right, so now that that's cached, let's go ahead and take a look at it. Um, yeah, so it looks pretty good. Uh, 
You see, there's still a little bit of a line there. Uh, we could probably push that a little harder. Uh, but really, the reason that line is there is because it dies down as, as it gets closer to the end of the keyframes. And you'll see, like, right about here, there's going to be a line as well. So one way to kind of get rid of that line is instead of keyframing it um, and having it die down, uh, I would almost maybe go one frame in and then just turn this up a little bit until you are at a point where you like it. So maybe there and then come back over on this side and do the same thing. Add a keyframe and just turn it up. So now all we have done is we've just made it so it's gonna be very strong throughout the entire movement. And that looks pretty good. I, I To be honest, I kinda of still like the other way better, but at least if you don't wanna do it that way, you have options. And there's a, there's a number of different ways you can do this technique. And um, I think that still the best way to do this will just to be do it and in, in before you get into post. But um, I hope that helped. And if you guys have any questions or comments, uh, please leave them down below. And if you have any requests for any tutorials, feel free to throw them out there. Um, if I know how to do it, I will. If I don't, I'll, I'll, I'll try and find out for you guys and uh, make it happen. All right. Well, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.